Okay, hi. So, as most of you guys are probably well aware, the trailers for Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee dropped last night, and honestly, I'm not really all that impressed with these games. The trailer looked great, don't get me wrong, it's just some of the information that came out during and after the trailer really kind of killed my hype for these games. I actually recorded a really angry rant video last night for today, but it got taken down due to copyright, and let me tell you, I was fucking fuming. I was so pissed, guys. And honestly, I'm kind of I'm kind of glad the video got taken down so you guys didn't see that that side of me, but some time has passed since the reveal and I slept on it and I'm pretty much cooled off now. I'm still upset with the direction of these games, but I'm going to try to be as civil as possible in this video. And also, uh, for obvious reasons, I'm not going to be able to show the trailer because it'll get taken down for copyright again, but I'll put up some screenshots as we go along. So essentially, the trailer starts off with some dude playing Pokemon Go on his phone, then it bleeds into gameplay of the new games. So it was stated in the press conference that these games are in fact main series titles even though these games are pretty different compared to the other main series titles. The games have a ton of Pokemon Go inspiration which has its ups and downs honestly. I'm a little bit disappointed with the art style of these games. They went for a more chibi route similar to the X and Y models rather than the more anime realistically vibe that they went for uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Don't get me wrong, the models all look great. I actually really like the look of the overworld as well. The colors look vibrant, everything looks beautiful. Um, eventually in the trailer it gets to the point where the trainer is shown walking around in the grass and stumbles, up stumbles upon a wild Pokemon. And this begins one of the main things that I absolutely cannot stand about these games. So apparently when you get into a wild Pokemon battle, there are no more wild Pokemon battles. <laughs> So, like, there's no more weakening Pokemon to catch them. Literally, all you have to do now is throw a Pokeball at them and catch them. I hate this. It literally takes the fun and the challenge out of these games. They literally, honestly, are pandering way too much to the Pokemon, or Pokemon Go community, and I, I cannot stand this. It also brings about questions for competitive play. If there's no wild Pokemon battles, how the hell is Eevee training going to work? Like, I, it's they're gonna have to figure something out. It's also shown that wild Pokemon use CP, which I think is Pokemon Go's version of experience. I'm not sure, honestly. I don't really play Pokemon Go. I've never really been all that interested in it, so if somebody could correct me there, that would be great. But uh, honestly, this game really feels like it's trying way too hard to pander to the Pokemon Go audience and not to the core fan base, and that's really disappointing to me. It honestly feels like a slap in the face to the core fan base. And what pisses me off even more is that these Pokemon Go people, some of them don't even know anything about Pokemon. Like, I've seen an argument over if Darkrai was a 4th gen Pokemon or not. Like, come on, obviously the core fan base knows that Darkrai has been around for like 10 plus years. These people don't know shit about Pokemon. So, look, I'm, I'm all for them trying to bring new people into Pokemon, don't get me wrong. But making these games into what literally feels like Pokemon Go on the Nintendo Switch with the side order of super watered down version of Pokemon Yellow, it just feels like an insult to the core audience. I know I've been really negative so far, so let's talk about some of the positives. There were actually a couple features shown off in the trailer I actually really liked. The first one of which was the two player co-op using the Joy-Cons. Unfortunately it is limited to local play so you can only play with a friend like if they're at your house. But it sets a really good precedent for the future of Pokemon, I think, because imagine if they expand it in future Pokemon games to online play. Imagine being able to explore, uh, battle, etc. with your friends online together in the overworld. That would be so cool, and I really think that's what they're hinting at here. I think that would be an amazing feature for the future of Pokemon games. The second feature that they showed off was the Poke Ride feature, which obviously is nothing new, but they actually changed it, and they made a really badass change. So apparently now, any Pokemon that's big enough, you can ride it. So Lapras, for example, was shown uh, for Surf. Uh, I believe it was also shown that you were able to fly on the back of a Charizard. Uh, you can ride on top of an Onix. That is badass. I really hope they keep that feature in future titles. That is so cool. And uh, the fact that you can ride any Pokemon as long as it's big enough, oh my god, yes, daddy. <laughs> so, speaking of the future of Pokemon, they also mentioned that a core Pokemon RPG title for the Nintendo Switch is in the works. It's slated for a second half of 2019 release, and sorry for the background noise, it's raining like crazy. 
so hopefully you guys can't hear that. But they mentioned that these games will be much closer to what people were expecting these games to be. More similar to X and Y, Sun and Moon, and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. It just sucks that we have to wait a whole another year to get the game we were expecting Let's Go to be. They also showed off a new Pokeball accessory, which is essentially a Joy-Con and Pokewalker put together. You can basically send Pokemon caught from Pokemon Let's Go, and I believe even Pokemon Go, into the Pokeball accessory and walk around with it in the real world, and it says you get some goodies for doing that. Honestly, I thought this was pretty neat. I'm really happy that they're bringing something similar to the Pokewalker back, and I really hope that they allow this accessory to be used in the future Pokemon titles, namely the 2019 games that I talked about earlier. Another feature I really hope makes a return in future titles is the ability to send Pokemon from Pokemon Go to the Switch games. That feature was honestly pretty damn cool. So a little bit more about the trailer, they basically showed off that you can customize your Pikachu or Eevee. You can basically play dress up with them, which is, I guess, kind of interesting. It uh, obviously depends on which version you're playing, of course. Um, honestly, I really couldn't care less about this feature, but I guess it's cool. <laughs> I'm sure some people will get a kick out of it, um, but I'd rather just have trainer customization, which was not shown in the in the trailer, unfortunately, so I'm not sure if these games are going to actually have trainer customization, so that kind of blows. They also showed off that you'll be able to battle trainers just like the regular games, which kind of makes it all the more weird that you can't battle wild Pokemon, but... I digress, Team Rocket was also shown off as well, and some Kanto cities, uh, even the inside of the SSN was shown, which honestly makes me think these games are literal, literal remakes of Pokemon Yellow, which again, is honestly pretty disappointing. It appears some of the battle animations also got a revamp, which is pretty cool. I really like those. They looked really flashy, especially the Hydro Pump animation, it kind of reminded me of the Kamehameha. At the end of the trailer, they also alluded to a brand new Pokemon being in these games, and if I'm being honest, this is pretty much the only thing I'm looking forward to out of these games. I just hope it's not one of those situations where you can only get this Mon from these games in the future. I hope it's like something you can catch at a later date, just for those people that don't really want to buy these games, such as myself. And finally, they revealed that the release date for Pokemon Let's Go uh, Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee is November 16th, 2018. Which I guess is all well and good. <laughs> it was also first reported that there would be no online features, but apparently that was a mistranslation or something happened with the journalist. I'm not sure what happened. But uh, apparently Masuda said that there will be some online features. I don't think they went into detail, so we don't know what that means. If it means like battles and shit or trading, I, I don't know. <laughs> I really hope that there's Wi-Fi battles in, this, in these games. That's pretty much the only redeeming quality for me. So if there's no Wi-Fi battles, I think that would really, really upset some people, especially myself. In closing, overall, I'm pretty disappointed in these games. Like I said before, it literally feels like this is Pokemon Go for the Switch, with a side order of a watered-down Pokemon Yellow, just in HD with pretty colors. In the presentation, Masuda said that he wanted to make a game for everyone, yet they completely pandered to the Pokemon Go crowd, and completely forgot about their core players. It honestly felt like a slap in the face and it definitely killed some of the hype for me for these games, especially after waiting almost a year from the announcement at last year's E3, and this, and then this is what the game ends up being. Like, I feel like they still could have pandered to the Pokemon Go audience, but kept the core gameplay the same. Definitely they should have kept the wild Pokemon battles, that way it would truly be a game for everyone. But I guess it makes me more excited to play the 2019 titles. I really just hope they don't mess those up.